Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Finally, AMD have given us some insight into the launch of the RDNA 4 based graphics cards. And too long didn't read, but we'll see the RX 9070 and 9070 XT be on store shelves early March. So, the first of these pieces of news actually comes to us from Lisa Sue. She is, of course, the AMD CEO, and during the Q4 2024 earnings call, she said, and I quote, In gaming graphics, revenue declined year over year as we accelerated channel sellouts in preparation for the launch of our next generation Radeon 9000 series GPUs. Our focus with this generation is to address the highest volume portion of the enthusiast gaming market with the new RDNA 4 architecture. RDNA 4 delivers significantly better ray tracing performance and adds support for AI-powered upscaling technology that will bring high-quality 4K gaming to mainstream players, with the first Radeon 9070 series GPUs going on sale in early March. Now, I'll just put a pin on that before we talk more about her comments, because we also have AMD's Frank Azer, who is the consumer and gaming marketing uh, chap over at AMD, and he has stated, RDNA 4 is early March. This is, of course, a tweet. And he also added in a response to Dbatch on Twitter, yes, there will be full details coming soon. Now, the rumor is that, basically speaking, AMD will be briefing us with some type of special conference or something like that later on this month and obviously this makes sense if you look historically of how gpus launch generally speaking around a month to a couple of weeks prior to the uh, graphics cards going on sale we have some type of full disclosure which goes to the press and then obviously then the press starts to disclose it to the rest of the people and maybe also they will make the uh, conference public as well. And additionally, I just want to mention that there's an article that has popped up on GPU Open. Now, this was posted today, which is the 6th of February 2025, and uh, the title is Solving the Dense Geometry Problem. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. I'm not going to go over the entirety of the article because it starts to get into a lot of technical nuance that uh, would eat up lots of video time, but uh, if you scroll down just a little bit, solution, hardware geometry compression. Dense geometry format is a block-based geometry compression technology de developed by AMD, which is directly supported by future GPU architectures. It aims to solve these problems by doing for the geometry data what formats like DXT, XTC, and ASTC have done for texture data. I won't read out the rest of that, but if you so desire, you can uh, pause it and then, of course, read it on screen. Now, again, that is almost certainly a reference to RDNA 4. I mean, I don't think that they would be putting this article out for UDNA, um, or I guess if you want to say the older uh, name, RDNA 5. Now, getting back to Lisa Sue's comments, there are a couple of actual key takeaways here. The first, and perhaps the one that uh, may be slightly less interesting to many of you, is that the 9070 does seem to be the cards which launch the soonest. I say that because I think most of you are probably slightly less interested in the 9060, although maybe I'm wrong, so let me know in the comments if I am. So it seems that the 9070 and the 9070 XT will be the first cards available, and then later on we will see the lower end GPUs launch. This seems to be a little bit like uh, NVIDIA's strategy, of course, with the RTX uh, 50 series as well as previous cards, so I'm not too surprised by that. However, there are a couple of other very interesting disclosures here. The first is that AMD are stating that yes, there is significantly better ray tracing performance. And I think that that word significant is actually quite key. Now, of course, AMD have been pretty tight lipped when it comes to the performance of these GPUs. They did release that slide that we've seen a hundred times at this point to the press around the time of CES, but it didn't exactly go deep into the performance capabilities of the GPU. For what it's worth, I am hearing that, uh, yes, there are some updates that AMD have been making, and this is also uh, pretty much what they've said publicly as well. So there does seem to be some work that's happening with the drivers and optimization and potentially FSR as well, but just how much of an impact it makes, I honestly don't know. It'll be very interesting to see whether there's any rumor or any confirmation that perhaps some other changes have been made, might be BIOS updates or something like that to the GPUs. Honestly, I'm just spitballing here, guys. I'm not 
not too certain, but I am hearing that these cards are actually pretty quick. We've seen a lot of rumours, of course, and a lot of benchmarks that have emerged online that put these cards, roughly speaking, on par with an RTX 4080. We had IGN, of course, and then we've had other leaks since then from Chip Hell and so on and so forth. And I have to say that I'm hearing much the same thing. It is very difficult, however, to know whether they are true or whether it's just people falling for the hype train. Ultimately speaking, we only have AMD providing us this little bit of insight that uh, we see significantly better ray tracing. That is, of course, versus RDNA 3. And of course, we also have previous comments from Frank Azer where he did mention that many of the leaks regarding the benchmarks for RDNA 4 are just actually underselling what the cards are capable of. So, Frankly, I do think RTX 4080 or better is potentially possible with raster performance. I'm going to be very interested to see what the clock frequencies of these cards actually are capable of, and also the prices. Again, Frank Kayser, he's certainly been uh, quite uh, vocal, despite the fact that the company are pretty uh, quiet about this overall. He did say that, uh, you know, the prices of like 800, 900 US dollars are completely bogus. So, that actually, to me, is a really positive sign. At the end of the day, the RTX 5080, for example, and even the 5090, they are not bad products. The problem is they just don't offer enough of an upgrade if you have an RTX 40 GPU. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, even though RDNA 4 is roughly on par with the current generation flagship, let's just ignore 5 or 10% here or there. Um, we're focusing on raster performance here. If it's at a good price, honestly, that is fantastic because not everyone has a 7900 XT or a 7900 XTX. Many folks are just upgrading their system or maybe are coming from, an, well, just a very, very old PC or just getting into PC gaming, so that's also good. Additionally, I am very interested to hear what you guys think about this particular little part of the sentence. Uh, again, she says, in gaming graphics, revenue declined, blah, blah, blah. Our focus this generation is to address the highest volume portion of the enthusiast gaming market with our new RDNA 4 architecture. Now, the reason I say that that's very interesting to me is that those two statements, I wouldn't say that they're conflicting, but uh, the wording is quite intriguing because generally when you have a card that is high volume, and they are again stating volume here, you're talking about cards which are reasonably cheap or affordable. So for example, if you talk about NVIDIA, it would be like the 4060 or the 4060 Ti. Maybe you could also argue the 4070. But the enthusiast market is generally a little bit faster. So again, maybe that is a hint of where we can expect these cards to be priced and also the performance as well. So there you have it, guys. I will be very interested to see how these GPUs end up. I will also be very curious to see what NVIDIA does um, in response to RDNA 4. The marketing, I think, for these cards will be absolutely... Well, <laughs> let's just say it's going to be interesting. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.